Hey everybody and welcome back to Is It Kino, your favorite movie review podcast. I am your host, Simeon Jimmy, joined as always by the Kino Corner. Hello, I am generic Hollywood actor number 327. Glad to be uh, the co-host and co-lead star of this particular podcast. Now, are you roasting Tom Holland or Mark Wahlberg? Take your pick. Yeah. Hey, I like Marky Mark, okay? He, <laughs> he has great opinions on certain Asian people. He makes <laughs> good music. And The Departed is one of my favorite movies, so I... I cannot Look. abide by. And Pain and Gain, one of the greatest rotten on Rotten Tomatoes movies of all time. Underrated I, I, okay. by definition. I will say this about Marky Mark. He also was in Boogie Nights, which is a great movie. Much um, better than Licorice Pizza. Yeah, yeah, it is better than Licorice Pizza. Which we um, promised we would be reviewing that, and then my microphone <laughs> broke, and we just never did. Yeah, I think that'll be on our... Uh, um, recap of the year because i did i don't think we're I doing that like, anymore it's been three months already i know i know but, recap none of the, shit. but but the thing is it's like these movies you know these big you know like uh snobby films right they don't really get to the rest of the u.s until like march yeah that's so, true the three movies i want to see from last year are not even available yet yeah it's it's bullshit honestly but, uh, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, I, I like Mark Wahlberg's been in some good movies. Tom Holland has been in some good movies. He's been but in he's... some Spider-Man movies and then some flops. No, but I, I did like, uh, the lost city of Z. I'd say that that's the Tom Holland movie that I liked. I don't think um, I've even heard of that. It's. It didn't do that well at the box office, oh. um, but it's a good movie. It's got Charlie Hunman and Robert Pattinson in it. It's a uh, Pattinson Kino. Well, yeah, if Robert Pattinson's in it, then it's got to be Kino. Yeah, but no, I mean, so obviously we're talking about Uncharted here. Uh, <laughs> for anyone who doesn't know, uh, I went up to Iowa last weekend, or I guess when this is releasing, the weekend before last weekend, and Mumkey, Eggy, and I, we went and saw some... Uh, some movies uh some were good and some were uh, not so great and uncharted i think was on the sort of the not so great uh here i mean if uh, you have to think about it uh, i'd say it was one of the most boring movies i've seen in theaters <laughs> well you know it didn't help that the that the uh, chairs at your cinema are pretty comfy yep that i was really really trying my hardest to stay awake do they just have started. you sitting on pins and needles down in Florida? You guys don't have comfy chairs? Uh, we don't. I mean, you have the recliner chairs. I have like the normal cinema chairs where it's just sort of like it does the job. But, you know, it's it's kind of like a, a middle ground, right? Where it's not too comfy to where you can just like sink into it and just fall asleep and whatever and wake up two and a half hours later. But it's not like uncomfortable, but it leaves you in a state of uncomfortability to where you can enjoy the movie. Yeah, I, I think the asleep. point we're trying to make is that we would rather review the chairs we were sitting in than the film itself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you want to, if you, uh, <laughs> I mean, I put out my video about why video games suck, video game movies suck, and I have Uncharted as a big uh, point of it. I think I called it soulless in my video. Now, I was a little correctly. bit, mm, say, perturbed by that video because I know that you wasted so many hours, and no pun intended by your movie title, but you wasted many hours watching all of these fucking video game movies, and then the video was like 12 minutes. You didn't even go in depth into any of them. You could have, I feel like, like you could have written that script to make the video without watching all of those fucking dog shit movies. Why did you do that? <laughs> Uh, honestly, because the initial, um, my initial idea was to like rank and review a whole bunch of bad video game movies. And then the, and then that part of the script ended up becoming 12 minutes and I didn't want the video to be some like 30 minute long thing. So I might end up doing a second part where I'm just, uh, ranking and reviewing, uh, video game movies. That's, that's, that's really what it was. Um, 
but I, I also wanted to like I wanted to watch video game movies. I wanted to watch a bunch of them just to see is there a diamond in the rough? Is there something that I can latch on to to say like, look here, guys, this is when it's done right. This is the thing to point to. Oh, well, yeah, it's called you bowl. <laughs> it's called postal. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but the footage you showed makes me want to see it. Like it had fucking Hitler and Bush and or no, it was it was it's, Bush it's, and uh, like uh, uh, Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden. Yeah, uh, that was good. But also, there's a whole bunch of Nazis in it. Um, it's pretty funny. I mean, it opens up with a 9/11 joke. So good. Um, yeah, it <laughs> like it really does capture the uh, spirit of Postal to, Postal Two. I would say pretty well. And it is funny. Um, it's it's kind of like, you know, you can tell that it's like really low budget. You can tell that it's kind of shoddily made in a lot of places, which is why I said it's not like a it's not like a good film, but it is funny. You know, it's it's one of those. Hey, where sometimes you don't even need to be a good film. You just need to entertain me. Yeah. Well, you know, we're, we're, we're 10 minutes in, nine minutes in or whatever. And uh, we've hardly said anything about Uncharted. Well, let me we, let me put my power level out there for everybody. Just to be clear, I've never, under any circumstances, ever played any Uncharted games. Evidently, somebody had a cameo in this movie that's involved with the games. I, I didn't know who that was, and I still don't know who the fuck that was. That was Nathan Fillion. Is he the voice of Nathan Drake? Yeah. Okay. So, he, so that was like the ultimate cuck moment. Oh, because he didn't get to play himself? Because he, he, he didn't get to play himself. Yeah, imagine you're like this big, bulky, hot-looking guy, and they say, no, we're going to cast this 20-year-old kid to play We're going to cast this little twink. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, what I'm saying is I've not played these games. I don't know if they have generic, boring, dog shit plots, or if that's a movie exclusive. Uh, I played Uncharted 2 back when it came out, but I was in high school and whatever. I don't know. I remember enjoying it, but I've never really been that enthused by a video game plot. And Uncharted, at the time, I didn't think too highly of it. I just thought, oh, this is just a gender bent uh, Tomb Raider, or this is just a sort of like milk toasty Indiana Jones. That's all I thought yeah. about it at the time. And that's kind of how the movie comes across as a milk toast Indiana Jones. I guess mixed with Goonies because they're on a pirate ship. I don't know, but I yeah. I feel like the movie did not show me anything new. Like even like the the helicopters at the end that are carrying the ships around. I feel like the most recent Fast and Furious movie did the exact same thing. So, like the, the movie does <laughs> not provide me with anything that I haven't seen before. Well, Okay, so um, I was listening to a YouTuber named uh, Luke Stevens, who is a big fan of Uncharted. He's made a bunch of videos on Uncharted, and uh, he was reviewing the Uncharted movie. And so from an Uncharted fan's perspective, like I'm not a fan. I played two, but I wouldn't call myself a fan, but he definitely would call himself a fan. And even from a fan's perspective, it sucks. <laughs> um, so, but of course we're all saying this and we're, and we're on this podcast saying like, yeah, it sucks. And I just saw a uh, article today saying that it's uh, going to grow something like $228 million or something like that. And now Sony's calling it their big blockbuster, their big new IP. It's going to make them lots of money. So, you know, black pill moment right there. But. Well, hopefully Tom Holland ages into the role. And maybe that was their strategy was they wanted to start a new big franchise. And that's why they casted him so young, because he's going to like grow into the role. But it did but. not make. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, having this Nathan Drake character just be a kid younger than me. And he's I mean, I don't know. Well, and it's just Spider-Man. Yeah, he's doing he's the same just, exact voice and yeah. pretty much the same character. He's like, oh, no, I'm sorry, as he, like, accidentally knocks somebody to their death. Okay, and, and talking about that scene, right? So that scene where uh, there's a scene that it's not even a spoiler because it was in literally every single trailer for the movie. And it is a uh, scene from Uncharted 3, the cargo uh, plane thing where all this Wait, stuff that's in the out. game? That's in the game. So even the big epic set piece is not original. 
Oh, no, it's not original. It's from Uncharted 3. Oh, yeah. my God. They had nothing, nothing yeah, original see, in the entire film. <laughs> see, that's what I learned while doing my... See, the reason why I watched all this stuff, the reason why I watched all these gameplay, you know, run-throughs and stuff for my video wasn't for my video, Monkey. It was for this particular Is It Kino, so I could bring this up right here, right now. Oh, good. Let's hear it. <laughs> so, yeah, so that cargo uh, plane thing is from the game, and there's a few other moments from different games that are in the Uncharted movie. However, Tom Holland's Nathan Drake is not like uh, the Nathan Drake of the games, but there has been some criticism of the Nathan Drake from the games because he's supposed to be this lovable rogue guy that gets women and whatever, you know, is pr like kind of a woman's guy. If I hear you say man. the term Ludo narrative dissonance, I'm ending the show. I'm not, okay, but I'm good. saying that he also <laughs> takes... No, but that's why I also put it in the video. I put yeah. the thing, I said uh, a, a term that uh, pretentious video game critics like to use. Because it is a term that pretentious video yeah. game critics like to use. But he also kicks a lot of ass in the games. And Tom Holland does not kick that much ass <laughs> in this movie. I'm sorry, but No, he spends, he, I uh, think, like if you if you really calculate the amount of time the characters are spending doing things, I think most of his time in the movie is like hiding in the trunk of a car. Okay, and I want to ask this question. So I was gonna get to this point. During the cargo ship scene, the cargo uh, plane scene, right? There is a moment where it's like he jumps out and it's really bad. I don't know what the hell happens, but it's like <laughs> he jumps away from the crate and then towards it. Do you remember that? The movie has no concept of physics. It takes place then, in its own magic world, I think. <laughs> but then it never shows him getting into the trunk of the car. It shows him spying on the plane. And then a few scenes later, they get out of the trunk of the car and you're like, wait, how did they, how'd they get in there? Like, wasn't that surrounded by bad guys the whole time or something? Also, why did the one, okay, spoiler alert, not that anything oh, in this like movie actually matters. <laughs> no, not that anything. So Antonio Banderas is the bad guy, right? Oh my God, the, what a waste. The bad guy. But the thing is, is that he's not, like, he's kind of a bad guy, but, like, his family is owed that treasure. He and, never even got know, the opportunity to do anything. He was he killed off by anything. his henchmen. And then the henchman was like, all right, we have his money now. No, you don't. It doesn't work <laughs> like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, he's just, just dead. Yeah, the whole movie, like, <laughs> physics are just imaginary. Any sort of logic or it's just... No, the movie it, works by the logic of if you kill somebody, then you get everything they own because he killed his dad and then got and then got his whole inheritance, which I don't know. I think that for a guy that powerful, they would do an autopsy and be like, yo, this dude was poisoned or how, how did he kill him? He slit his throat. He slit his throat. This it wasn't even like an arsenic poisoning or anything. Yeah. yeah, and like video game logic is better than this movie's logic because mm -hmm. like in the big cargo scene when he's fallen out of the plane and he has to jump from cargo to cargo to climb back up into the plane and somebody's like up ahead shooting at him, Tom Holland just magically <laughs> appears behind the guy. It, because he became Spider-Man. That's yeah, the problem. for real. That, that's like, the there's for no way. He, he's jumping from cargo to cargo, and this guy loses sight of him, and then Tom Holland appears behind him. It was at that exact moment that I thought I should have just slept. I should have taken a nap. <laughs> yeah, I think horrible. we all, we all were, uh, I was having to, like, you know, use my fingers to, like, pry open my eyelids to stay awake. <laughs> I was... <laughs> It, I mean, it just moves at such as like what you should have pace. done. You should have done the old popcorn trick. Put your dick at the bottom of the thing and have Aggie reach in. That would have kept you awake. <laughs> well, I mean, and get butter all over it. I don't, I don't Lubrication. know about that, man. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't buy any condoms before to protect me from the uh, butter oh. and potential, uh, you know, popcorn STDs. But um, no, the uh, everything that you see in the movie too is. Uh, it, it, it's it's basically just like a very pale imitation of something we've seen uh, 
prior, like Indiana Jones, especially, I mean, Indiana Jones, you know, there's a whole sequence that I don't, I feel like I've seen it before somewhere and maybe it's just been a while since I've seen the indie films, but where he has to turn the key below and she has to turn the key above or no, Mark Wahlberg has to turn the key above. Um, so they're kind of doing this simultaneous uh, thing, you know, like the simultaneous uh, adventure sequence, you know, action sequence going through the vault and then yeah. Mark Wahlberg going through the street. And it could have been interesting, but, you know, the problem that like a movie like this does is that it puts the character in mortal danger um, early in the film. And you don't feel any sort of, you know, tension because you know that this character is going to live. You're like, wait, he's the main character. He's not going to die. Okay, so it's going to be one of those like Hollywood sort of cliche, like, and in the last second, you know, the day is saved. And of course, that's what happens. Yeah, you and probably want to save the mortal uh, wounds for the climax of the film and not the very beginning. Yeah, well, it's like, or or you want to have that happen to secondary characters that aren't part of the game. Yeah, aren't and, and have known. them actually be killed to show us that people yeah. can die in the movie. Yeah, exactly. And that doesn't really happen here as, as no. far as I know. Like, they, they kill Antonio Banderas, but it's so stupid. Like, so he gets his throat slit. But all that does is he was probably the most charismatic actor in the entire film. And then it's like, oh, wow, for the last third of the movie, we no longer have the most charismatic actor. Yeah, and he shares exactly one scene with the hero of the movie. So yeah. it's like, why is he even here? He has and, and, and very it's a, little and it's relationship a, with the protagonist. And then before they can even face off, he's killed. Yeah, it, it, it's just like they intentionally neutered the film. Yeah. You know, and Antonio and, Banderas is the only person with charisma on the entire set. So once yeah. he's dead, it's like the whole movie is dead. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, so for anyone who is uh, a little upset at Antonio Banderas getting killed off, I will give you a uh, recommendation for some Anto Antonio Banderas Kino. Puss in Boots? And that is the skin I live in. Oh, not Puss in Boots? No. Dude, what about uh, Shrek 2? Shrek 2 was great. That what was about Kino, Shrek definitely. 3? Well, um, <laughs> what about Shrek 4? <laughs> or you're pushing it now. I'm just naming every Antonio Banderas <laughs> movie I know. Well, what about Spy Kids? Uh, uh, Spy Kids was okay. What about Spy Kids 2? That was okay, but Spy Kids 3 was not. What um, about the one with Joel McHale? Wait, what one with Joel McHale? They made a, a spy. Oh, you don't know? They made a Spy Kids with Joel, M Joel McHale, and it <laughs> really? flopped. Well, that's probably why I don't know about it. Yeah, not good. <laughs> I just know that uh, when I was working at Troublemaker Studios, Robert Rodriguez said that for Spy Kids 3, the first thing he did when the studio asked him to make it, because they wanted him to make Spy Kids 3, and they wanted him to release it in less than a year. Uh, in 3D, right? The first thing he did was Google, how short can a studio feature film be? <laughs> <laughs> One hour and 15 minutes, right? Yeah, I, I, I think it was an hour and 25. It was like 75 minutes or something like, no, an hour and 15. And there's yeah. 20 minutes of credits? Yeah, yeah, so that's what he did. He just, he wrote it and made it to be an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> He, he wanted to make it as short as he could possibly uh, make it. So um, that's the first thing he did when making Spy Kids 3D. A little, little trivia, a little trivia right there for the listeners out there. But yeah. For all um, you big Spy Kids fans out there. <laughs> now you know a piece but of yeah. trivia. But yeah, so Antonio Banderas gets killed off for the third act. And the other thing that happens that kind of sucks for the third act is there's this like a, a double cross, right? Where Tom Holland is sleeping with the, uh, you know, the uh, woman of the movie. And he figures out where the treasure is. But he doesn't trust her. So he puts down fake coordinates on the oh, table. Right. Like he writes it down. She wakes up. She sees the coordinates. And then she takes off. And then he wakes up and he's like, aha. But 
I had the real coordinates stashed away in this Bud Light <laughs> bottle or whatever it was, you know. And he takes that out. And I'm just thinking, isn't she supposed to be this, like, uh, pretty seasoned treasure hunter? Wouldn't she think that maybe it was a trap that he just left these coordinates just, you know, just out? Well, I don't think you can expect open. this uh, tertiary character to be playing 4D chess at all times. I appreciated that detail because it was a red pill moment that uh, <laughs> women will manipulate you to get what they want. And then uh, you got to trick them. Yeah, well, I mean, he was, he was, uh, that was definitely Sigma behavior, but according to the Uncharted fans who know the character pretty well, that's definitely not, uh, consistent. Nathan with that Drake character. would not lie to a woman? No, no, no. It's not consistent with the woman's character who's more, who's smarter than that, I guess, in the games or whatever. I don't really care, but, um, it, it just seemed like if you, if she was able to get that far, then um, she'd probably be able to notice that maybe this is a little bit of a setup. This is, He's just leaving this out for me to take, you know? Uh, maybe this is a little bit of a test, but she doesn't oh, she ever... she failed that test. <clears throat> she failed that test, but what it really did was it just kind of wrote her out of the third act of the film. Yeah, they didn't it, have anything else for her or Antonio. Yeah, it, she only shows up like near the end where she's in a speedboat and she basically does the uh, cartoon version of like shaking her fist going like, yeah. Nathan Drake. <laughs> hey, maybe she'll be back in the sequel. You don't know. Well, they're definitely setting it up for her to be back in the sequel, but it just felt like they had no idea what to do with her. In the third act of the film, so they just kind of wrote her out. Does Uncharted ever go into, like, magic realism territory, or is it all uh, uh, grounded? Uh, I because don't know. It's if they could so have, long. like, if he goes to, like, an ancient Aztec temple, and, you know, maybe, like, a zombie could appear, maybe Antonio Banderas can come back. Maybe. I mean, that's definitely in Tomb Raider territory. Um... Well, I mean, you know. it seems like these movies are just going to blatantly copy everything that's better. So <laughs> might as well copy that, yeah. too. I actually, the the Alicia Vikander Tomb Raider movie, I thought was pretty decent. I thought it was very mid. I didn't think it was bad. Compared to this, I, it's a masterpiece. It, it's definitely better than Uncharted. Yeah. yeah. Well, because, I mean, not because of Alicia Vikander, but because Walton Goggins is always fun to, to watch. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, he, he definitely carried, especially the second half of that film. And um, he's always just really, really fun to watch on screen. So, Alicia Vikander, I can hit her, I, I can yeah, take she, her. She's good in her. Ex Machina, and then I have not been impressed. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, there was a scene with uh, um, Nick, uh, what's his last name? The guy from Hot Fuzz. Um, Frost? Nick Frost. Yeah. In the uh, Alicia Vikander Tomb Raider that I did enjoy where she's just like coming up with a sob story and he's just like taking away the money that he's going to pay her. So like, <laughs> just because you keep talking, it's going to be 9,000. She goes, no, you don't understand. I'm trying to find my dad. He's like, all right, 8,000. <laughs> like that was a, that was a pretty good scene, but um, that movie was better. I mean, it was more, it was just as traditional and kind of by the books, but it just felt like it had... It had more um, of a uh, most dangerous game vibe, whereas this movie was just cartoon well, action. I, I think one of the problems with this movie is that the characters don't really have any motivation for doing what they're doing. Well, Tom Holland like wants he, to f fulfill his brother's quest or something and then at the end they're like oh but the brother is still alive and I'm like oh you expected me to really care about this didn't you you made it a fucking post credit <laughs> scene like I give a fuck yeah and uh, well and the other thing is like so they're doing this to get money right I guess that's why Sully's doing it oh, and the you producers of the film <laughs> yeah the producers of the film it's, the, it's like that space balls uh, how about for Spaceballs 2, the quest for more money? Yeah. <laughs> you know? It kind of, like, but Sully's doing it just to get a whole bunch of money. But that is Tom Holland's or Nathan Drake's, you know, 
motivation as well is honestly just to make a whole lot of money and we don't see in the before like before the adventure starts right we don't see why tom holland necessarily needs it's it's not like he can't make his rent it's not like he has you know all sorts of financial problems it's not like he's down on his luck or is about to be homeless or something like that and the same with Sully. we don't see that they're always portrayed as like Oh, they're these cool guys, you know. Yeah, Tom just, Holland like, is the cool bartender. Uh, yeah. No, I think he was miscast in this role entirely. <laughs> Tom Holland is never the cool bartender. He's the kid <laughs> trying to sneak into the bar. Yeah, he looks way too young to be a bartender. Yeah, and he, it's, it's just not for him. He should be playing teenagers until he's 30. I don't like what they're doing with him in this movie at all. Yeah, I mean, this whole movie was miscast, I think. I think that's the that's the first problem. Well, no, the first problem is the script. The script is a mess. The script doesn't make any sense. Uh, and then the second big problem is that it was miscast. And the whole, like, ending... So there's this ending sequence. Uh, we're getting to the 30-minute mark, so let's wrap this up. <laughs> Um, you can yeah, only there's... dedicate so much of your life to talking about this movie. <laughs> Look, we're getting to the point. 30 minutes would be about how long my nap would have been <laughs> during the Uncharted movie if I'd given in to what my body wanted me to do. The so. Next time you should never deny the body yeah. what it wants. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you know what? I learned after that when I was watching the Super Mario Brothers movie, I took that nap. And you know what? It was good. It was a nice nap. Wait, the Mario didn't movie was anything. more boring than this one? Uh, it was stupider than this one, that's for sure. I mean, that would be good. I wish this movie was stupid. It was <laughs> it was dull, and it showed me nothing new, and that's like the biggest crime I can think of in a movie. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's dull. It's so derivative of so many other films. Uh, yeah, derivative. Act- that's a smart guy version of what I said. I should say that from now on. <laughs> yeah, just, just... It's like a... Um, it's like saying it insists upon itself. Yeah, yeah. it's shallow and pedantic. <laughs> yeah, shallow and pedantic. <laughs> Actually, the reason why I was like, oh, hey, can you give me 15 minutes? I was finishing up an episode of Family Guy, so. Oh, um, is it the new one? No, There's no. There's a new I'm episode up. tonight. I'm catching up, so. Okay, good. I was you watching don't want to miss one, out. I was watching the one where he, he goes to prison for Thanksgiving. It was actually pretty funny. Maybe we should uh, quit watching movies and just review every episode of Family Guy as its own podcast. <laughs> yeah, the, the Is It Keto podcast just becomes the uh, the world's worldwide uh, renowned Family Guy podcast. Could you imagine if, if we do like a, a three and a half hour podcast on each individual episode <laughs> and we really like dive as deep as possible into just every possible piece of trivia uh, that would be, I mean, true Kino. We'd get verified on Twitter. Yeah. I know that, um, are you a fan of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Oh, yeah. So, I guess the, the three main guys started their own podcast where they do, like, a behind-the-scenes chat about each individual episode. And, uh, that sounds pretty Kino to me. I think I'm gonna check that out. I don't that know does why I sound... that up, but I guess the talking no. about Family Guy made me think of it. That does sound, uh... That does sound interesting. I met one of the writers of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, um, but he wrote one of the bad seasons, so Uh-oh. we don't talk about that. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and uh, no, but yeah, I guess we should uh, just wrap up Uncharted. I would say it's not Kino. I'm giving it a two out of ten. Yeah, you know what? I might give it a three out of ten just because, uh, you know, the set design and some cases was decent i genuinely wish i did not see it and what sucks is i bought aggie's ticket so i technically paid for this movie (laughs) twice yeah you watched it twice with your money yeah yeah fucking (laughs) rip my money (laughs) yeah it i would have rather taken a 20 dollar bill and lit it on fire just to see it burn rather than watch this fucking movie in theaters it it wouldn't have lasted as long which would have been nice would have entertained me more yeah I mean, this is a like. All right, this is this is how we can say you can watch Uncharted, and I will recommend Uncharted if you have insomnia and you're trying <laughs> really hard to go to sleep, and it's on Hulu or Netflix or something like that, where you don't have to really pay for it. 
then definitely watch Uncharted because you will go to sleep. Yeah, you know you fucked up when your action adventure movie is a cure for insomnia. <laughs> well, anyway, so our next movie that we watched in this weekend was Death on the Nile, which I thought was a lot better than Uncharted because I didn't try to fall asleep during it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I don't know if I ever podcasted about the original uh, maybe I did, I don't fucking remember, but I remember somewhat enjoying Murder on the Orient Express, and this movie seems like a, a carbon copy, but they just went a little deeper and darker, and that's what I appreciated about it. And yeah. as far as, like, detective, mystery movies, you know, all, one of the people in this room is the murderer. Like, I love that genre, so it, it earns yeah, extra points too. just by being that. You know what's funny, too, is that the Family Guy episode that I was watching right before doing this podcast, uh, where he was in prison on Thanksgiving, uh, Peter, Sch uh, Peter Schmidt, his uh, father-in-law, was obsessed with Par Poirot. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And so he, it was like this bit where he was just obsessed with Poirot. And I was like, oh, well, I'm going to review Death on the Nile in like 20 minutes. So Yeah, this movie gave him a backstory, <laughs> and I started to actually like this character. I think he's pretty cool. Yeah, it opens up with this really interesting uh, black and white um, sequence in World War One, where it's going through the trenches and it's a pretty beautiful sequence, actually. It's going through the, the trenches and you're seeing... Do you think they the filmed that at the same time they were filming 1917 and just <laughs> used the same footage? Just a big tracking shot through trenches? Um, probably not. You know, oh. they uh, they probably just got some more French slaves to just uh, <laughs> dig them some trenches in, yeah. I don't know, eastern France or something like that. But it was, it was a really good opening sequence. And then it goes to color for the rest of the film. And I have to say that the cinematography of the movie, I, I believe it was shot on 65 millimeter film. Um, it's a really kind of stunning looking film. And it has the look of it. It the way that it looks feels like uh, an imagination version of the 30s. I don't I, like I don't know how to really describe it, but it does feel like this sort of uh, nostalgic version of the 30s or how people in the 30s, right, who would be like fantasizing about Egypt or fantasizing about these other parts of the world, how they would view Egypt, you know, how they would view these other parts of the world. The thing that really stuck out to me, though, was how sexual this movie was in the opening dances. <laughs> Where they're essentially just fucking on the dance floor. And I was like, oh, okay. I, I all right. I, uh, they must really love each other. Yeah, I think uh, famously Egypt, Egypt in the, the 1930s was a very liberal uh, utopia where, you know, all <laughs> sexualities were equal and you could just portray whatever you want in public and nobody would say or care and you definitely wouldn't be killed. Yeah. No, I mean. They only recently became Muslim. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was a real paradise back then. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, so basically for anyone who doesn't know, Death on the Nile is based on the Ag Agatha Christie novel of the same name. And really a lot of these Agatha Christie novels are pretty, uh, pretty similar. There's actually an Agatha Christie book that has a title that I think Rusty Cage would be really interested in oh the knife game no it's uh wait I, I i'm looking up the exact title name right now um it's called uh ch -ch -ch -ch. wait a sec my phone is the family friendly news song well the thing is is that the the title got changed to and then there were none right which yeah there's a family guy episode called that Everything comes know. back to Family Guy. I don't know why I know that, but you, but Mumkey, do you know what the original title of that book was? Uh, something about Indians. No, ten little n words. Oh, <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> yeah, that's the original title of the book. Uh, you Ten think little Rusty specifically would enjoy that. <sighs> well, he's my only friend who's done blackface. So, <laughs> as far as you know, as I, far I bet as Florian I know, yeah. is in blackface right now. <laughs> We better go to Austria. You know what? And if he's in blackface, I think we need to like let Russia know that they have to denazify Austria. True, yeah. Yeah, Nazis were famous for their blackface. <laughs> I was actually in an Agatha Christie play back in high school called Oh really? The Mousetrap. And I believe Was I... that like the uh the movie with uh, um Nathan Lane and uh, I, I've not seen it, but the twist is I know that, that was Mouse Hunt. The twist is the detective is the murderer, so I've ruined the mm. mousetrap for you. <laughs> there you go. Now Wait, there's isn't no that reason like, to see it. Isn't that like uh, David Cage's Heavy Rain? You're just naming shit I've never heard of. Oh, that's that really shitty game that I kind of made fun of in my uh, oh, video. Oh, is that the Jason? That thing? Jason, yeah. yeah okay, I know what that Where, is. In that game, the detective is the murderer. Uh, yeah, yeah, ripping off Agatha Christie. Ripping off, dude. It's just all derivative. Look, Although, it's just... I mean, technically, that's derivative of uh, Oedipus Rex. So, yeah, <laughs> where the, de the detective is the culprit. <laughs> you know, in that case, he didn't know. Yeah, in that case, he didn't know. And you, <laughs> you want to know something too? The guy that made Salo made a uh, movie uh, called of Oedipus? Oedipus Rex. Yeah. Did he actually follow the story? Uh. I haven't been like I found a really kind of shitty quality copy of it. Um, I didn't really want to watch the whole thing in 240p because I felt like, you know, I don't know. It's going to take me out too much. I haven't actually seen the whole thing. I've only seen the first 15 minutes because the quality was like a really bad scan of the film. I've always thought that Oedipus Rex could use a bit of a modern flair because every interpretation I've seen is very stoic and boring and slow and i'm like this is a very exciting mystery where the detective yeah. doesn't know that he fucked his own mom like this needs to be high energy and it needs to be very emotionally Look, charged I, all right i have i have a pitch for a modern 21st century oedipus rex adaptation okay where oedipus rex is disabled is a disabled comic book artist okay who fucks his own mom Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I like where this is going. Yeah, but see, he doesn't know that what he's doing is wrong. He until... thinks that he's uh, curing her with his <laughs> massages. <laughs> uh, with her until massages. E until Ethan Rowell from the Kill Stream sh shows up while he's being arrested. Oh, and then Digibro's uh, boyfriend goes and beats the shit out of Ethan, and it's very fun yeah. to watch. <laughs> Yeah, just uh, Oedipus Rex, but starring Chris Chan. To be fair, the the tragedy of Chris Chan is far worse than what Oedipus went through. <laughs> uh, yeah. And and the sad thing is, Chris Chan doesn't have the uh, self awareness to gouge out his own eyes. That is true. That's very true. Yeah. We but anyways, back to death on the Nile. <laughs> um, so the the premise of death on the Nile is that. Army Hammer is seeing this one British chick. I don't know what her name is or whatever. She's pretty cute. And they're engaged to be married. And then she introduces him to Gal Gadot. Uh, the reason why this film won't show in Lebanon and a few other Middle Eastern countries is because she was in the Israeli military. Uh-oh. But anyway, so she's like this like big time Hollywood actress. She's an heiress. You know, just like a goddess kind of figure, right? And Army Hammer, the uh, Army Hammer, the uh, cannibal <laughs> man eater, whatever. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> hey, when we're horny, we all text things we wouldn't really do in real life. I got to give Army Hammer Look, some credit here. All I'm saying, all I'm saying is that I want to make an American psycho where Army Hammer eats Hollywood celebrities. Well, that might be his only opportunity to be in a film again, so maybe you should. <laughs> we'll have to hit him up. Everyone, uh, if anyone has a connection Wait, we've to already Army done Hammer. this! We did a whole fucking bit about making movies with those people. We can't do this again. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah we already did the thing with Kevin Spacey. <laughs> we already yeah, did all this right, shit. forget it. But anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyways, uh, Army Hammer basically becomes the head of her estate 
you know, because they need money. Like, he's kind of a, you know, he's unemployed. Uh, so, and his soon to be wife doesn't have that much money. Poro sees all of this at this club. And then six weeks later, uh, do we need Gal to go Cadeau through the and whole Army plot? Hammer. Who fucking cares? I don't care. Sure. I've seen it. Yeah, six weeks later, Gal Gadot, Army Hammer are getting married. I, I'm not giving out the whole plot. I'm just sort okay. of. I mean, this is like the oh, okay. backstory. Okay, right? let, let me fix it for you. Somebody gets killed, and the detective has to solve it. That's the plot. <laughs> yeah. Well, the person who gets killed is pretty obvious. Like it foreshadows who's gonna get killed. Pretty much every single scene of the movie. Um, I'm surprised so you know, that all those like Lebanon. I don't know why they are banning the movie. They should be celebrating it just based on uh, Gal Gadot getting killed. <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert. Um, but yeah, Gal Gadot gets killed, and the thing is, is that everybody at this wedding party that's on this cruise has some sort of stake in, you know some sort of reason for wanting to get her killed. Yeah. So it's up to Poirot to sort of suss out, like, uh, who suss could have killed out? her? Suss out, yeah. Somebody's being dude, sus? Dude, this is literally like Among Us. Oh my god. <laughs> it's it's like Among Us, too, because then the imposter keeps killing people. That's right. <laughs> if they would have called the movie Death on the Among Us, I bet it would have made more money. Among, Among, Among Us, us on, on the Nile. Nile. <laughs> <laughs> It would <laughs> legitimately would have made been a hit. three times more money than it did. Oh, or or even more. Yeah. And just uh, every time, like uh, Poirot accuses somebody of uh, being the murderer, it's just like uh, you have the emergency meeting there, and you have a little thing where the person is cast out of the boat. Yeah, they or... can make them walk the plank. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, walk the plank into the crocodiles in the Nile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But no, I mean, it's a it's a pretty standard to sort of that kind of uh, mystery movie where, you know, who the murderer is, you know, like whoever the murderer is, has been introduced. Right. Like the, the, the case for all these movies is that the murderer is always introduced in the first act. You know, so you're always watching in the first act to see who the potential culprits are. And then the movie becomes a sort of a, uh, um, you know, a game of like, okay, well, this person had this reason to do it. This person had that reason to do it. And, you know, and you're just kind of parsing through all of that. I got it half right. Um, in my prediction, I got it half right. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that. That's right. Um, yeah. So, you know, it, it still had a little bit of a surprise for me. Even if part of it wasn't that if part of it wasn't that surprising, but part of it was. So um, it was able to keep me engaged. And like, I haven't read Death on the Nile. That's kind of a book for middle aged women, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I like Agatha Christie, but I, I, I feel like Agatha Christie is something that middle-aged women read and then everybody else just watches the plays or the movies of. You know? I don't know. I don't know if anybody just, even reads at all anymore. I, I have not seen a person read a book in ages other than myself. Yeah. You know, I read this, uh, this one book recently that was uh, compared to Dostoevsky and Tolstoy. It's called The Triflers. Oh, who compared it to those? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I I don't know many people that read anymore. I I like to read kind of nonfiction stuff, but um, I don't. Yeah, no, the the uh, people that read, it's I don't know. They read their Facebook posts, I guess. That's yeah, what for real. Are. People think that reading is just scrolling through Twitter now. Yeah, but I think our point is this movie is, uh, you know, it's pretty run of the mill, but it has an but it, uh, <laughs> it has enough going for it to be entertaining and a yeah. somewhat surprising conclusion to the mystery. Although, I mean, they the people who didn't do it, I feel like did not get enough screen time or characterization. Yeah. So I never really had a reason to suspect them. 
Yeah, like you never really suspect uh, Russell Brand's character because he's hardly a character in the film. Um, he's really only like Russell Brand's characters. He he plays as the Doctor, who was previously engaged to. That Gal was Gadot. Russell Brand. Yeah, it was Russell the Brand. The comedian. Yeah. yeah. Holy fuck! I didn't know that. I haven't <laughs> seen him in a long time. Well, he's been doing all sorts of stuff on YouTube now. Now he's like a red pillar on YouTube. Oh, so yeah, half the, by the way, half the cast of this movie has been canceled since they filmed it. Uh, I wonder (laughs) if he is in that category. Because like the the girl from Black Panther became anti-vax and she's in this movie. Mm -hmm. And, you know. uh, What's her name? Letitia Wright? I'm not even going to pretend to know. (laughs) I I don't really know. I, I think that's the name but i could be completely wrong yeah and army hammer was outed as a cannibal and uh based was somebody else canceled in this cast maybe it was just them well gal gadot was in the (sighs) oh yeah gal gadot was in wonder woman 1984 so she should be canceled as well yeah she was also in the israeli military so she probably killed some palestinians (laughs) she canceled some children's lives Yeah, it's a, it's a, you know, it's the perfect cast of a uh, canceled actor. So, well, it's, I'll, uh, it's, for my final thought, I'd say, do I recommend it? If you're into mysteries, do you have to see the yeah. prequel? No, you could just go straight into this one. You don't even have to see the other one. And yeah, I hope you they don't... keep that up. I hope each, I hope they keep making these with this character because I like him. I like Kenneth Branagh in the in the role, and I hope they keep making them and that they're all pretty much standalone. Yeah, you know, I I did like that about this because I didn't see his version of Murder on the Orient Express. Um, Oh, maybe you should, because I think he gives it just as good of a performance in that movie. Yeah, I mean, I like Kenneth Branagh as an actor. He's hit or miss as a director. You know, he made uh, Artemis Fowl and Thor. Wait, he directed that new Artemis Fowl movie? Yeah, What a piece of shit. Fuck him. (laughs) For real. <laughs> they went out of their way to to shit on the source material and then make the worst movie they could. Well, what the fuck? They, that dude is talentless. I take back what I said. Fuck this movie. <laughs> fuck, fuck Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Fuck Kenneth Branagh. <laughs> fuck Artemis well, Fowl. Are you kidding me? Monkey. That was one of the videos I made for uh, the YouTuber Cynical Reviews. I had to edit his video on Artemis Fowl. Ugh. So unfortunately, I have that entire movie memorized. Oh, it's just like God. burned into my head. <laughs> I hope he paid you like like eight thousand dollars for that because it's not worth it. He didn't pay me nearly enough. He, oh he, he didn't pay me enough for that. For that. We need to cancel one. him. <laughs> but uh, um. No, but I would say that Death on the Nile is pretty sort of standard boilerplate mystery stuff. Um, you know, if you're into that, it's going to be an entertaining. It's it's what, two hours long? It's something like that. And and to be clear, if people are about to say, oh, but Jimmy, you said that Uncharted was unoriginal, but now we're saying this movie is run of the mill. Uh, this movie had a script that was basically written by Agatha Christie, and Uncharted was written by a committee of people who wanted to water it down. <laughs> so, yeah. like, uh, this movie works because the script is based on a classic piece of mystery literature and not loosely based on a video game that probably doesn't yeah. have a plot to begin with. <laughs> Yeah, and and also this movie had much better performances yeah. by the actors than in Uncharted. And Kenneth Branagh as Poirot really does, he does have a lot of charisma, and he's in the whole movie. Unlike Antonio Banderas, who's barely <laughs> in the movie in Uncharted. Yeah, yeah, Poirot <laughs> is is a great character. I'm, I might actually go find some other media featuring this character if they're all as good as Kenneth Branagh. Yeah. And, you know, and, and the other supporting cast were all pretty good and they were all very charismatic. Russell and- Brand clearly disappeared in his role because I had no clue it was him. I guess that beard really hit his face. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they were all entertaining to watch. It had nice cinematography. As I said, I think it was shot on 65 millimeter film. And it's a every shot is very pretty. Um, you know, definitely is like a movie that wants to be super pretty at the same time of being dark. But, um, you know, everyone is 
really good. Like the, there's not a whole lot of uh, complaints I have for it other than it is kind of run of the mill, which is why I would give it like a six, seven out of 10. Like, I think it's pretty good. Um, it's not too deep. You know, you're not going to like, it's not going to change your life or anything. You're gonna not going to watch it and be like, wow, that was just stellar. But you're going to watch it and you're going to probably be entertained and glad that you spent, you know, the last two hours watching it. And you're going to feel pretty good about it. It is less boring than Uncharted, uh, but I would not say either of them are Kino. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's like one is very bad at being an entertainment piece and the other is good at being an entertainment piece, even if at the end of the it day, it doesn't transcend just the medium at all. It, it's not like the greatest detective story ever told. It's actually yeah. maybe one of Agatha Christie's weaker mysteries, maybe because like you solved yeah. it pretty quick. Well, and, and also the, the other problem with Death on the Nile is that it does have some pacing issues. It takes a while to get to the actual murder in the film. So the murder in the film happens about halfway through the movie. And so the real tension kind of kicks in about halfway through. Yeah, but then he's like interviewing everybody and every character actor gets two to three minutes of an interview. So we don't get to really know these people or their motivations yeah. all that well. It's more they're telling us them rather than showing us their like why yeah. they've done it yeah which is why it's not a great movie but basically for what it is it does the job yeah decently you know but yeah it, it's i i would never say it's great i wouldn't say it's kino but uh, considering we sort of double featured this with Uncharted, it was <laughs> <laughs> by comparison, it was a masterpiece again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, I mean, know, it's, a, it's a solid six out of ten. Keynote, uh, what do you have going on on your channel? If people click on over right now, what can they expect to see? Well, you can expect to see my video on why video game movies suck. Um, but also, but also but. this week, I'm not. <laughs> I'm uh, releasing my video. I'm actually, at the time of recording this, I'm about 50% of the way through editing it, um, my video on a Serbian film. Featuring perhaps featuring, a certain egg-shaped man. <laughs> featuring egg white. Did you see that Eggy got his YouTube channel deleted today? Really? Big yolk? Yeah, he got three copyright strikes all at the same time and the channel's terminated, so. Oh my god. I hope gosh. he's doing okay. He, uh, they always, I don't know, it's just like he rises up and they just beat him back down. I tried inviting him to podcast tonight, but, eh, he didn't seem up for it. He said he'd rather be at the gym, and I can't blame him, because I'd be fucking frustrated and pissed, too. I'd want to start lifting. Yeah. I don't, I don't blame him. Yeah. That, uh, that shit sucks. Yeah, it sure fucking does. Yeah. Because then he has to start all over again, and people won't even know he was missing, and they won't find the new channel. Uh, it, it's yeah. just, it's shitty. Well, so and hopefully he just, makes a new one so we can start linking to it. Yeah, and I'll, I'll link to it definitely when he makes a new one. I mean, a, a lot of people don't even want to look into, uh, if a new channel is made. They just don't do that sort of research they just click on whatever youtube recommends them yeah you know so it really sucks because when you build up those that subscriber base you know a lot of the people that you build up are fairly apathetic and uh you just have to i don't know if you have to start over again it's just it just makes it hard yeah i can barely convince my subscribers to watch my videos let alone find a brand new channel yeah, actually, speaking of watching your videos, I watched the video of us making the uh, shit, vomit, and blood like three times. Oh, was that a good one? I thought it was. I thought it was hilarious. I showed my roommate, uh, <laughs> Florida roommate, that today. Um, I was like, "Yo, uh, this is what I was doing in Iowa." <laughs> yeah. It's an 18-minute video of me producing shit and vomit. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was funny. Yeah, I enjoyed editing that one. That was fun. I don't know. I normally can't watch myself 
on camera, but I thought that one was pretty funny. I thought we had some good banter on that. So everyone watching this should definitely go watch that. I think it also performed pretty well, right? It's a two out of 10. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah my audience wants to watch me eat shit. That's true. <laughs> that's right. That's right. But anyways, it's time anyways. for us to say goodbye. Yeah. All right. I have been a reactor. Oh, I've been uh, Rusty Cage, and I'm going to go say the N-word while wearing blackface, and uh, I'll leave you with the last word. The last word is n-